Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed For a kiss mm -hmm. I prefer to solve my problems by kidnapping pretty girls and tying them up in my basement. I will take accountability and admit that I did discuss inappropriate topics with a fan. Why don't you come on in and uh, have a seat real quick. Okay. Yandere Dev, if you're watching this, you screwed up bad. So for those of you who don't know, Yandere Dev apologized a few days ago, where he finally publicly addressed the accusations of grooming underage fans. Granted, because of the severity of the situation and how these types of accusations negatively impact someone's life forever. In my first response video, I tried to remain as neutral as possible. Tried to give him the benefit of the doubt as much as I could. Since in the past, Yandere Dev has expressed how negative attention on the internet has impacted his mental health. What does Yandere Ray Dev decided to do in return for that? Remove the apology video. I attempted to groom an underage fan. According to him, it's not totally removed and it's just been set to private. But if you were to go to his channel right now and check out his latest videos, it's not there, which to me ultimately serves the same effect. He removed the apology video, which personally to me removes all credibility it could have had out of the window since he clearly can't be that apologetic. And if anything, the video feels more like him just trying to cover his own track. But apparently he left a statement about the matter in his community notes. So I'm going to read that next just to see if it gives us any added context. Video has been set to private. I did not wish to do this. Unfortunately, video is putting a specific individual at risk not me someone else Cal. i felt that the video was extremely important and i really wanted it to remain public however as long as it was causing tangible harm to someone's life i couldn't allow it to remain visible perhaps this will change one day in the future but for now it must remain private i would like to express my gratitude to everyone who watched the video accepted my apology and encouraged me to keep bettering myself and working on the game now i can't put my finger exactly on why but something is telling me that is cap apparently yandere dev is expecting us all to believe that someone who must not be named that isn't him is being negatively impacted by the existence of this apology video to the point that despite his best efforts he had to take it down you know when i first heard that it reminded me of something else alex had said in the past in reference to him having allegedly groomed another underage fan who was only 14. there was no girl there was a guy who made a tumblr page where he made up the fake identity of a 14 year old girl and he said, oh my God, like I knew Yen Gary Dev when I was 14. He said this and this and this to me. Oh my God, it's, it's like an internet troll posing as a 14 year old girl. Huh? So let me get all this straight real quick. Not only do you have multiple alleged instances of you attempting to groom underage children, and one of those instances becomes so publicized that you have to apologize for it publicly. You make up the excuse of an imaginary person your apology video is harming and take it down. And in the past, when you were caught doing the exact same thing, you make up an imaginary internet troll to justify your behavior? Even if we do go with the very obvious lie that the underage girl you were talking to was actually someone just pretending to be 14, nothing about that would change the fact you're talking creepily to someone you think is a 14 year old girl if you think it can't get any worse than that trust me the rabbit hole gets deeper listen to another lie that alex stated in his original apology video about a conversation he had with a 16 year old girl about starting a only fan out of the remarks i made only sound bad when they're out of context for example there was one time when the girl jokingly said you should make an only fans and i said no that's dumb no one would ever want to see that and she said something like, come on, it's so easy to make money on OnlyFans. And when I heard that, I thought, whoa, that's a little concerning. Uh, don't tell me that social media is brainwashing this generation to think that they should just go directly into the second they turn 18 because it's the best way to get rich quick. That's a little concerning. I wanted to know if she was joking or if she was being serious. So I asked her, are you planning to start an OnlyFans? And of course, the YouTuber used the recording of me saying, are you planning to start an OnlyFans? To frame me as someone who initiates horrifically inappropriate discussions with children. Now here's a clip from the actual conversation. Okay, it, let's just hypothetically imagine I have an OnlyFans. Now, what do I post on the OnlyFans? I mean like just naked, naked pictures of me? I don't think I'm good looking enough for anyone to want to subscribe to my OnlyFans. When you turn 18, are you going to start an OnlyFans?
Well, how can you recommend that someone else do it if you wouldn't even be able to do it yourself? Nah, I can't speak for y'all, but to me, that sounded like him coaxing her into making one for herself. Notice how he even specifies when she turns 18. So there's no getting around the fact that he's aware of her age and he knows exactly what he's doing. When I had originally watched his apology video, I wasn't aware of all the evidence racked against him. Because of that, I believed him when he said that he had no intention of grooming or proposing any romantic interest to the 16-year-old that he had been speaking to. And he's very adamant that those were not his intentions in the video. I did not attempt to establish a romantic or sexual relationship with the girl. And now let's take a listen to a couple Snapchat messages between Yandere Dev and the alleged victim, which I'll be reading to you. Keep in mind that cosplay fan is Yandere Dev. Legally, yeah, you can't go from sexual talks with the minor to saying, wait until you're legal to continue this with me. That's, I think, the definition of grooming. But if I said, whoa, 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 don't say that until you're 18. Subtle change in phrasing makes it not grooming. But this relationship was totally not okay. I'm 16. I am so lonely and miserable and depressed and unhappy. Happy. Of course, the one time a girl is actually nice to me, I got attached. You were so fun and funny and charismatic, it made me want to keep talking. I am not an evil predator who goes around little girls. I am a lonely, vulnerable man who made the mistake of being flirty to a girl. Loser. So those messages are obviously completely manipulative and disgusting. And they definitely make you question the whole claim that he never intended to have a romantic connection or relationship with this girl. Considering the fact that once she calls him out for his behavior, he starts bringing up how depressed and lonely he is and how nice she was to him. Mind you, those were not the worst messages between the two. Gonna give you guys a bit of a disclaimer for the rest of these voice messages because they're honestly very uncomfortable. But I believe they're necessary here just to show you how full of BS this guy Alex is. I just stay inside and work on the game. I should have turned nothing. Oh, you'll see how old I am. Oh, yeah, look at you. You're cute. Yeah, you're fucking you should. I don't know if you too. I don't feel good about it. Yeah. Oh, you're sweet. I have a, a question for you. Um, What's your question? I just, I don't, I want you to like call up or anything. Go ahead. Do you, do you talk to other girls when you... No. Okay. Wouldn't it make me a bad guy if I did? Uh, I would make me, um, an upset person if you did. You'd be upset? It was just like, not like a serious way, just like, you know, oh. Am I a bad guy for talking? You, should I stop talking to you? No, you should stop talking. Well, I mean, like, you should, but please don't. Just, like, you know, pause. I like your company. Oh, you're so sweet. Do you think you can call like this more often? Maybe. I had fun. You're, you're funny. It's fun to listen to you talk. Fun for the high next time. I just like it. I'm I would also be very interested in interacting with you when you are regular. I want to learn what regular you is like. <laughs> the high you is very cute and funny. Yeah, uh, my hands were frozen. Yeah, you do that a lot when you're high. I do a lot when I'm so too. No, you're so cute. <laughs> it's because you keep being cute. If you don't want to be called cute, then stop being so cute. It's simple logic. And I thought it was just normal. That's not normal size. Oh. No, I, I think average size of uh, one of those in the U.S. is like five and a half. <laughs> wow. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know how to respond like that. I don't know what to say about it. I don't have one, so I'm not like a penis expert. I know that was probably pretty intense for some of you, and I apologize for that. But none of those topics were things that you want to be caught discussing with a 16-year-old. With him almost being 40 years old, Alex knows better than to be doing that. Though it's completely inexcusable behavior, and regardless of you being lonely or not choosing to go outside of your own volition for like 7 years, Alex, none of that stuff justifies you being creepy with a child. Well, that whole last half of your apology video where you're basically trying to use your mental health as an excuse for you doing this, it's genuinely disgusting, Alex, and it's as low as it gets. Please understand that the intent of this video is not to attack Alex, but instead to bring light to something I believe he's trying his hardest to hide. Which brings us to the next topic he covered in his Addressing the Allegations video, Yandere Simulator itself. I'm going to continue releasing updates for the game and I'm going to continue releasing videos on my secondary channel. Just a few nights ago, I decided that I wouldn't be able to accurately discuss this topic without playing the game for myself. Oh, I downloaded Yandere Simulator for the very first time. Tell me, sister. My fault, my fault. 
My fault, my fault. I didn't mean to get caught, my fault. Bitch, you gotta go, bitch. And your friend. Oh, she's snitching. Prior to this, my only experience with the game was watching other YouTubers play. After my experience, the only thing I can ask next is how it took so long for all this news to come out about the creator. Because the entire game of Yandere Simulator is about the fetishization of a culture, with a hyper fixation on that culture's underage girls. And I mean that in every aspect, whether it be through the violent elimination methods or the kidnapping mechanics, or the terrifying fact that upskirt shots are used as a form of currency. While all these things by themselves are technically not something you should be worried about. I feel like when you combine them all together with everything we know about Yandev's personal life, it definitely does start to paint a very alarming portrait, to the point where it becomes concerning that the internet decided to fund this guy's habits and livelihood for so long. Now with all that being said, do I think he should continue developing the game? Absolutely. And at this point, it's not even about him. It's about the thousands and arguably millions of people who invested time, money, and energy into the completion of this product. Despite my personal opinions on the subject, I feel the game should definitely see a public complete release but yeah that's pretty much all i gotta say in this one make sure you leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel and buy my merch and if you're watching this yandere dev you did not stand on business i come in clutch like a genie